What exactly is a force, anyway? You gonna learn today! Greetings, and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. Now, if you're wondering what this pink Rappy is doing here, if you'll look at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see that this is actually Keiko. Uh, because, like I said last week, both Thrush and Keiko are wearing Rappy suits to celebrate the 10th anniversary of uh, PSO2, since the seasonal event is largely based around Rappies. Especially with, like, the release of, like, the Rappy spot mechanic, where you can fight, like, Emperor Rap or what was it, Emperor Rappies? Something like that. The big Rappies. Anyway, so the reason Kate goes out today is because I wanted to work on it. I wanted to completely overhaul my force guide. So I made this guide um, December. I think December. Maybe it was January. But I made it shortly after Retem came out. And the reason I did that is because I realized that all of the guides uh, for Force at the time were all like from when the game's release. Like none of them had updated. So even though I don't really want my channel to focus on educational stuff, like I wanted to be more entertainment focused, uh, I decided to go ahead, put my two cents in and make a guide for Force. Um, the problem is that that guide was extremely biased, especially against wind techniques because a seasonal event was going on during the time that made everything to weak the wind and just amplified the frustrations I had with those two techniques. Which now, I still don't think they're all that good, but I don't see them as bad anymore. They're like, they're fine. Anyway, I'm going to leave bias out of this video. And that's because next week I'm going to be rating every aspect of the Force, including, uh, you know, weapon actions for the Rod and Talus, stuff like that, as well as all of the techniques. Uh, but for now, I'm going to try to set Bicest to the side, focus on facts, and do this Force Guide right. So, let's get into it. So, I'm wanting to start... So, we're going to go over Force skills before we go before, over anything else. I'm going to save uh, techniques and such for last. So, on the, up, on the top up here, you have mostly your subclass skills. PP conversion, which I thought was a main class skill, but apparently you can take that as a subclass, which I can see that being uh, a factor as to why people would want to take Force. But let's see here. You got PP recovery boost, which in which increases your natural PP recovery, which is kind of important if you're going to play force because you want your you want to spend as little time using normal attack to boot to regain PP as possible. Uh, we got eradication PP gain, which means you gain PP back when you kill stuff. Very useful for PSC bursts. Then you have um, let's see here technique charge PP well up. You can recover PP through natural recovery while charging techniques. So, if you have uh, PP conversion up, just charge a technique, and while you're charging it, PP conversion will do its job, and then you can just release the technique and then go back to spamming. Or like you know, not, that, that's one example. But like obviously, this it'll your PP will go back up as you're charging a, t a technique, regardless. So if you need to charge for whatever reason. You know, you've got you've got some uh, photon points back. Then there's there's rest of field f force. Oh yeah, rest of field for force, which just makes your rest assign AOE, so you can heal multiple people. This is more of a tacker skill, I think. But in the interest of like, I guess that's more nice than anything else. I'll shut up. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is kind of this is kind of nice to have for a class that's more. Offense oriented than uh, support oriented, and then you have slow landing charge, which just makes you not slow. It just makes you not drop to the ground whenever you're charging a technique, which is useful if you're trying to like stay in the air and out of enemies' reaches and use techniques. Which is a playstyle that I've used for a long time. Although nowadays I'm trying to focus more on 
staying in the heat of things and getting counters. But we'll talk about that in a bit. So, let's see here. We go to the next row. Um, actually, you know what? Before we focus on these, these are kind of, these are kind of the meat and potatoes of your character class. Let's focus on uh, spell tech mechanics. So, Foley Brand got released uh, with alongside Kavar. So, Fire finally has its own mechanic. Uh, so when e so you hit with your fire techniques, Foley and Gifoy, you hit enough times, and this uh, triangular brand appears on your um, on your enemy, and then you cast a fire spell at them, and the brand explodes, dealing additional damage. Bar to blot, you've seen me do multiple times. You hit an enemy seven times with an uncharged uh, ice technique, and as you're hitting them with uncharged ice techniques, the symbol boot starts to form. And then on the seventh hint, when that symbol forms fully, you use the charge technique, it explodes, dealing additional damage. Zonde clad, you hit you hit enemies with um, uncharged lightning techniques until this purple circle appears around your character. And then you char when you charge techniques, that techniques you charge is strengthened, dealing more damage. Upon which you return to normal. So, this is going to come up a lot if you're fighting a lot of trash mobs because of Zahn's chained lightning uh, aspect. And I'm not, I'm not going, that's all I'm going to say. I'm trying to keep my bias on the side for now. So, Zan Galil uh, is one of the simplest of the uh, spell mechanics. All you have to do is hit an enemy once and they get a wind symbol on them. And then you hit them with a charge technique and that symbol... I think it explodes. Yeah, it activates the vortex, causing additional attacks. Not kind of it. Yeah, it it deals extra damage by the merit of dealing additional attacks. Then we have Grant's glitter. Uh, so much like Zonclat, you hit enemies with lights techniques until this circle appears around you, and then whenever you use her tech, your light techniques. Uh, you extra attacks up here. So like you ca you cast uh, Grants three swords uh, Shoot down at your enemy. Well, if you have Grant Glitter active, it's five. Oh, I think five I don't know exactly but it's, it's more than three Then you have Medjus Spear you cast uh, Dark techniques three times and each and these uh, three balls appear behind you like you cast once you get one You cast once with your counter you get two and you count up, and then you get up to three, and then if you ca if you cast um, if you charge Medjid, you get these four horizontal bar um, uh, balls instead of just the one. And then you can get you you can if you charge one, well, you only have like one or two. Like you'll get extras depending on how many you have back there. And then if you charge Gee Medjid, you'll get an extra attack based on that. Yeah, that's what it is. So you charge either Medjid or Gee Medjid, you get extra attacks on it. So that's all six of the uh, mechanics. So then we're going to go. Then we go over here. You have PP conversion increase, which improves the number of stocks of PP for conversion. So like, you get this up to five. You it, it, this just increases decreases the strength of it. You get this. You get an extra charge of PP conversion. Then there's this. This is also came up kind of recently, but not Kavaris recently. This gives you access to three new spells that are kind of like. Well, okay, I, I'm going. I'm going to do something. Okay, you know what? I'm not. This gives just. This just gives you three access to three new spells that are kind of like super spells. You get like. I don't know. Yeah, you get two stocks of. Uh, compound technique, right? And then depending on which one you have slotted, you can use up. Like you can use. One, if you have both charges up, you can use one, you can use like, one compound technique, and then like you can switch and use another one. You don't have to like use both. Um, but yeah, this, all, the, this on top of giving you like two charges, up, it also unlocks them, so like, yeah, now you have them, if you, if you pick this. And yeah, I am not going to say anything else because it's perfect, so I'm moving on. Photon Flare. This is your main thing. Like, you want this to build up because Photon Flare 
increases your and not only does it increase your maximum photon point so that you can carry it also increases the potencies of your weapons uh, for a set time once it runs out you have to wait for the cooldown when and then you can, it comes back up and you can use it again so next to photon flare you have uh, technique domination which it just increases the damage you deal to down enemies with your techniques so if you build up for example if you build up like Keiko she's a she's force and bouncer bouncer her skills with bouncer let her give her an increased chance to down enemies to ca to cause them to get what, what's the term stunned I guess like they just kind of bend over and get into this position for a bit and they're vulnerable and can take extra damage and they did take extra damage and fighter deals even more damage to them but we're not talking about fighter so if you have techniques domination up then your techniques do even more damage to your enemy because they're in a down state so let's see here moving on we have float uh, so these are all abilities that ab amplify photon flare somehow like they boost it Fo photon flare short charge uh, your technique potency is reduced during photon flare but your charge time is shortened it makes you charge faster uh, photon flare after PP gain or alter PP gain I don't I don't know that's this I can't really tell. Uh, no it's after it's after any PP you use during photon flare flare will be returned to you uh, will be recovered when f the flare is over so you cast a bunch of techniques while photon flare is up because you want to because it deals extra damage and then your photon flare kicks off and it's on cooldown and you get all the PP you spent while it was up back next up is photon flare short cycle short photon flare short cycle reduces the effect duration of photon flare but shortens the cooldown time I actually don't have this learned uh, because I don't like the idea of my photon flares being shorter even though it reduces the cooldown time and means that you can use it more often and more often in theory I don't really know how that works out so I don't I don't have this active um, Somebody, I guess, can say in the comments if they think that I should have this active. I don't know, <laughs> but I don't. I don't. I don't have it active. I, I imagine I, some people like see it as really useful. I don't. I kind of. I doubt. I press X to doubt. Moving on. So now we have some kind of. Uh, actually, yeah. Now, here are all your raw techniques. Here, these uh, six. One of which I don't have active for reasons. We'll get into that. So maintain PP gain or photon point gain. And if you don't attack or dodge after using a technique, your photon points will recover. Uh, I don't really see much use of this because I'm always spamming techniques if I can help it. But maybe if you like want to wait a second or something like, if you don't have a means, good means of recovering your uh, photon points other than attacking, you decide you want to attack, you take a shield pill for a second. Or like, if you're in the middle of a fight or fight and then your stop the fight stops and you just like move. Like your PP recover faster while you're moving to the next fight or something, I guess. Then next we have Elemental Bullet. This is a, in my opinion, a vital skill to have. Uh, successfully, go, uh, wait, oh wait. Oh, okay, no, never mind. Uh, this is not what I thought it was. This is your counter. So, successfully guarding with a weapon action will add an attack by f a photonic bullet of the same element of the next initial technique you use. So you use your weapon action, you block an attack with it, which is more of a parry because it's like an, it doesn't last very long because you can't hold it. So you parry an attack, and then the next technique you charge has these two bullets shoot out of your rod to also hit whatever uh, you, you your technique hits, and that 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 gives you like a second number of damage. Then there's raw technique hold. Sidestepping or using weapon action while charging a technique will maintain the charge status, so you don't lose your charge when sidestepping or weapon actioning. Uh, the next use of the same technique will have reduced charge time and consume no photon points. I have this learned, but I almost never use this. I should actually take note of that and try to weapon action while I'm holding it while I'm charging a technique. I'm. I completely forgot this was a thing. 
but that we're, we're not talking about me. We're talking about what we have on offer here. So let's move on. We've got Rod React Advanced. Using a technique while guarding with a weapon action or successfully dodging with sidestep will make you invulnerable for a while. So it just gives you iframes, which is always nice to have. Then you have a buff to Elemental Bullet in the skill Elemental Bullet Advanced. If you refrain from attacking or dodging after using a technique, you will accumulate elemental bullets. So this is how I somehow get elemental bullets to trigger even though I don't. A uh, uh, weapon action. Uh, the, I believe there's some times where I've used Keiko in battle scenes where you've, this has happened. This basically just gives you free elemental bullets after a while. Although I don't really see how refraining from attacking or dodging is it after using a technique is it just triggered because I'm always spamming out the techniques. But I, that's just my lack of knowledge. Moving on, we have raw technique PP well up. If you recover PP naturally while attacking, while activating techniques, however, your natural photon point recovery speed is reduced. And that's right there should tell you everything about why I don't have this. Uh, why I don't have points put into this skill because I want my natural photon recovery speed to be as high as possible. Moving on, we have the six talus base techniques. And I don't have any of these activated because I don't use talus. Although I do have a talus bot and ready to go, and I will be dis dis uh, demonstrating that's the term how it's used although i probably won't be able to use it in full capacity because i don't have the skills uh selected although i could probably do that because i have a bunch of end reset skill points i'll think about that so moving on to the first skill we have tricky capacitor expand a ga gauge to build up built up by attacks to fire a special long range attack so apparently talus has gear that's interesting to, to learn Moving on, we have Talus Bloom after a PP game, or yeah, after a PP game, photon point game. At the oh, at the end of a Talus deployment triggered by a photon art, you recover photon points based on the number of times the technique was used while it was deployed. So okay, that just helps with your keeping your photon points up. So next is Talus Bloom Revoke, pressing and holding the weapon action button will cancel your talus deployment of it by a photon art not really sure what that's saying there but then again i don't really use talus that often next we have tricky capacitor quick recharge so these two skills bolster this skill so we have here for a limited time after unleashing tricky capacitor the tricky capacitor gauge will fill faster so we don't have talus gear just that this ability has its own meter Okay, well the skill has it as one meter. And then we have Tricky Capacitor Gauge Amplifier. When your talus is deployed due to Photon Art, the level of your Tricky Capacitor Gauge increases when you attack an enemy's elemental weak point with a technique. Interesting. So apparently you can use techniques while your Photon Arts are active. That's what I'm getting out of this. And I've never used talus in NGS before, so that's interesting information. If it's if it's true, uh, that's, that's kind of the impression it's giving me, but that might not be the case. Moving on, we have floating pill blocks, multi rock. That is a mouthful. Mm. Then again, it's not as many words as some of these. But anyway, when weapon action is activated, attack multiple enemies intermittently for a set time by not performing a directional input. Okay, that's interesting. You know, maybe I should go ahead and, and use some and then reset skill and buff these up so just so I can see Talus at its full power. I can do, I, I have so many of them, I can just switch right back after I'm done recording. That's a thought. Well, that's all of the skills Force has in its arsenal. So next, I'm going to talk about some cl subclasses. And... These, this isn't based solely on opinion. This is what these classes can subclasses can offer for us as subclasses. So I'm going to start with fighter. If you remember, there's a skill that increases technique damage to downed enemies. Fighter is all about damage against downed enemies. So that's one option for 
if you want to focus your force as being a boss fighter, for example. And then, yeah, you increase PV recovery when attacking downed enemies as well, which will help keep your photon points up while using techniques. So, yeah, it's a, it's a valid option. Uh, so, next, let's see here, we have Gunner. And the reason Gunner is a valid option is because it increases your photon point recovery while attacking. So, if you ever run out of um, photon points while spamming techniques, and uh, fo photon point, what was it? I use this ability all the time. Yeah, photon point conversion is on cooldown, and you have to result to normal attacks. This will make that process faster. It also has overwhelm, which means you increase photon point recovery when attacking trash mobs, basically, any enemies other than bosses. Which I'm pretty sure all like veteran and gigantics and ancients are like bosses, so. Well, yeah, just trash mobs. So next up, we have actually no, hold on. Okay, yeah, everything else here is main class stuff. Actually, is overwhelm. Yeah, overwhelm's main class. Okay, overload, overload is main class. So next we have. Well, I suppose. Yeah, no, I wouldn't call tech. I wouldn't say that. So next we have bouncer, and I would honestly say this is the best in slot for a forces subclass because. Bouncer's thing is about increasing down factor applied to enemies. It increases the chance for... Well, not the chance. It increases kind of like the amount of... De of like, okay, I guess the way we would say it would be like it reduces your enemies' elemental resistances to making them easier to put into a down state. I don't know if that's exactly what, what it is, but like that's kind of an example, I guess, of what... It, I don't know. I, I could be completely wrong about that. But yeah. Force to, well, Bowser's whole thing is in making enemies be in the down state longer. Which couples well with Force. Whose main thing. And I do mean this. This is their main thing. Is focusing on elemental downs. No class in the game is better at, at inflicting elemental downs than, than Force is. Just with, how, just with the big numbers it can put out with its techniques. So Bowser... Force and Bouncer kind of work hand in hand very well. Right, so. I've covered skills. I've covered potential subclass options. What I think are the best options. And what I've seen people say are the best options. So it's not just my opinion. I recorded all of this up in one section. Thinking that I'd be able to get it, break it down. and Cut it down to like 20 minutes. And be able to work on a video next week involving my biases, which which parts of the Force class I think are better than the others, and put them all into tiers, right? It took me 20 minutes of footage just talking about the skills. This class is ch clearly chunkier than I thought it was. So, this is just going to have to be part one of the guide, and then next week... I'm what we're going to talk about rods versus taluses, which weapon has more of an edge. You know, what, 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 no, not, no, which one has more of an edge. That's obviously fit for the bias video. Which weapon has which abilities, you know, what each weapon is used for. And then, if I can fit it into it after that, I'm going to talk about the techniques and the compound techniques, what all of those do. Uh, but if I can't, it's, this is going to be a three parter, <laughs> unfortunately. Because I definitely want all of the techniques and compound techniques together in a video. I don't want to split that up. So, with that, with that said, I am going to have to cut it short here. I apologize for that. Because at this point in the video, it means the world to me, as it always does. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Farewell. I really did cut off a one I can chew with this, holy crap. Holy guacamole!